Today on Contractor Fight TV, I'm going to make the case for why you need to spend the majority of your time building great relationships and going after your past clients because they're better than the new ones. Let's go. All right, fighters, we spend so much time trying to find new clients. Every single business does it, and here's why. Because it's sexy, and we feel like we should just be dominating and growing our brand and growing our audience and growing our customer list, which you should, okay? I am not at all, I just wanna, I wanna set the tone for this, this uh, show here today. I'm not saying don't have a strategy to generate new leads and new customers and new sales. However, uh, one area that I see over and over and over contractors make mistakes in is they don't spend enough time um, prospecting, building relationships, and going after their past customers. So I'm going to share, I think I got four things here today, four, not five ways, I guess, four or five ways. I don't know what it is. I didn't number them, of things that are, uh, that are going to make the case for why you need to really go after your past customer uh, list. Now, I just said past customer list, which is AKA CRM, right? If you don't have a customer database, if you don't have a database of every lead that has come into your business, whether they hired you or not, you are missing out. I, I, did a, I did a video many, many years ago, probably five or six years ago now, easily guys, where I went back and did the math that in my first two years of business, I didn't have a database. I was just out there hustling. I didn't understand what I'm talking about now. I was just hustling for new work and I had all these past customers that I had no, I didn't keep their records. <laughs> like I was such a shithead about it. And it cost me about 2 million bucks in repeat business in the first two, two and a half years of business. It was some number like that. And so, um, guys, you got to have a database. All right. Every time the phone rings, somebody fills a form out, whatever, you have to take that information, put it into your CRM, your database, sales tracking. I don't care what the hell you use. It doesn't matter to me. Just track this shit. And then you can, you can segment that list. If you want to send an email to all the people that never hired you. All right. If you wanted to print that list and give it to your sales team and say, Hey, call these motherfuckers who didn't hire us last year and see if they ever did the project, you'd know who they were. That's what I'm talking about. You like, you got to mine your database. There's money in the list. You've heard that before. If you hadn't heard that, you haven't been paying attention to the sales and marketing world. All right. But there's money in the list. Um, so with your past customer segment of your list, all right, guys, this is where the majority of your time should go. And I don't mean you're picking up the phone and calling and go, you want to buy something? That's what I'm talking about. There's many tactics that we teach and stuff, and I've done many videos out of how to do that, but I just want to make the case here. I'm not going to tell you how to do it here today. Uh, I want to make the case and hopefully give you a little motivation, a little, little fuel for it. Number one, repeat customers spend more money, <laughs> okay? Um, in fact, Data tells us that they spend about 67% more money with you, all right? So repeat customers, um, they have more, they purchase more over time because they, they know that you're there, all right? Your, the, your past customers don't have to go on the hunt for another contractor every time they want to do something, and sadly, most of them are because you're not keeping in touch with them, all right? Guys, they trust you enough, all right? They trust you enough to um, hire you again, to purchase more from you. They trust you enough to spend more money and do a bigger project with you because of the experience they had with you in the past. And this is where a lot of you don't consider what's called lifetime value of a client. Oh, too many business owners, too many contractors are just going, all right, this is a thousand dollar, you know, project. I'll just use a thousand bucks. And you look at it as a thousand dollar transaction. What you fail to see is how many times are they going to buy from you over the next five or 10 years as a happy client? All right. Um, recently did this breakdown with somebody in one of our programs and their average lifetime value of a client was about $23,000 in a five year period. Okay. They'd been tracking these things. They'd been marketing to their past customers. They've been sending them direct mail pieces like a company, like you could do a newsletter that gives some tips or whatever. It could be snail mail. It could be email. I told you, I wasn't gonna tell you how but you could have client appreciation events. You could pick up the phone and call them. You could do warranty visits, all right? So let me just pull this out here real quick. 
their average job size, let me pull my calculator out, was about uh, 3,700 bucks, okay? The first, the, the average job size, 3,700 bucks. That means because they're staying in touch with them, instead of doing just a $3,700 project one time and then dropping off the planet, they're generating another $19,300 on average from that same client over a f almost a five year period, okay? And at the time that we did this breakdown, they had 325 people in their database that were past customers. So times 23,000 bucks, that's $7.4 million of sales in a five year period just from their past customer list, okay? Give them attention. Number two, take a drink of agua. Number two, repeat customers, your past customers that are easier to sell to, all right? Listen, you have limited time, right? That's why we teach our sales process the way we do, that you don't run out and spend time with a bunch of tire kickers. You don't want to waste your time with potential buyers that don't end up buying, right? You have limited time, limited resources, limited bandwidth mentally and all that stuff. So guys, keep in mind, when you are keeping in touch with your past customers um, or a, a, pers a pr prospective customer, your close rate's gonna be very much lower than it is with your past customers. In fact, past customers are likely, if they had a good experience with you, okay? That, that's the caveat here. And you keep in touch with them and shit, and they had a good experience, they're, uh, they're over 80% more likely to buy from you again. Think about that for a minute, okay? Um, so guys, one of, one of the guys in, 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 our, in our programs, his name's Bob, he's a GC. Uh, if you were at Mile High, you know the story. Uh, we teach a thing called UITs that we teach you how to reach out to your past customers and generate conversations and kick some you know, activity up. Uh, he started doing a few U UITs a week to his past customer list with his fucking cell phone. And I think he started that in the middle part of the month of May. And at Mile High in September, he had told us, he'd share with us, he had already sold over $505,000, okay? Just from this one activity of reaching out and communicating with his past customers. Guys, they want to give you more money, okay? I, I shared, I don't know where I did it. I shared it on a podcast. I shared it on a video. I don't remember what it was. But um, the people that painted my house last summer, they're amazing, okay? I love them. They did a great job. I couldn't have been happier. They've not communicated with me once since they left here okay and I'm not ripping on them they just don't know what they don't know they're ignorant to the fact of how much power there is here the queen and I are sitting around this week going man we got to paint the rest of the inside of the house it's looking kind of ratty all right and uh and I would love for them to have stayed in touch with me so that I can hire them again people want to hire you I don't want to go find another painter or an electrician or a landscaper or a modeler. I want you. I want the one that I had a great experience with. All right. So don't, don't bullshit yourself and thinking that they don't want to spend more money with you. All right. Number three, trace new customers cost you more. Okay. Listen, we all, I, I want to invest as much money as I can into shit that works, but I also want to be, I want to save money where I can too. And guys, it's much easier to sell to a past customer and keep them than it is to acquire a new customer. Some data will tell you it's five to seven times more expensive to get a new customer than it is to keep a current one. All right. Um, somebody we were just posted uh, this past week uh, of me recording this here in October in our battleground group, he shared uh, he spent $25,000 this year so far on Facebook ads. Um, and he got 11 jobs totaling $460,000. Okay. So that's an average sale of about 41,000 bucks. Now he did share that one of those sales was like 130 grand. Okay. So that skews it a little. All right. But guys, here's the thing. I'm all for that. Something works. I've talked about this before. Like, Hey, that's a pretty good, if I could put $25,000 into a machine and it spits out almost a half a million. I would do that all day. By the way, his profit margin on this, his gross profit, is, is, he said is about 50 to 55% on all these projects. So he's not selling his work cheap. He's doing what we teach him to do, and I'm super proud of him for that. However, 25 grand divided by 11 jobs is $2,272. That's what it cost him to get the sale, 
with new people. He's paying 20, almost $2,300 to get a customer. And there, there's a place for that. Please understand, all you marketing people that are listening, people that are a little ahead of the, uh, the, the crowd here on some of this stuff, I'm not going down that lane right now. Like if I can spend 2,200 bucks to acquire a customer that's gonna bring me a $40,000 sale and then you add lifetime value into that, I'm, go I'm totally good with that, okay? I will do that all day. But what I'm trying to communicate here is it just costs you more to get a new customer. All right, a lot of you guys are like, man, I don't have all this money to spend on marketing and this and that, I don't have these skills. That's why I'm encouraging and trying to make the case that um, you need to attack your customer list. Spend your limited time and money where you know it's gonna have the most impact and that's your, your past customers. All right, number four, repeat customers, your past customers, they promote your business. They have conversations with people. I mean, you guys, you know, I hired Heiner Outdoor Living. Matt Heiner's a great dude, lives here in Colorado Springs. We've hired him to do our front and backyard and this and that. I can't tell you how many fucking conversations the queen and I have had, whether she's at Pilates having a conversation. So people are like, oh man, we saw your backyard on Instagram, the video you guys did, it's beautiful. Or, um, you know, just, it comes up. We were at another friend's house and we we're sitting in their backyard and they're like, yeah, you know anybody, man, we got to, we got to do something about this yard. And there we are, there I was, I was sending Matt's information. Okay. When you deliver an amazing product and service and experience, like I, I hope you guys are, your, your past customers are an amazing sales force for you. Guys, marketing can be expensive. It could take some time to generate and figure out what's working and all that stuff. All right. And, um, but this doesn't cost you a penny. Stay in touch. Many of you, you have low referrals, not because you did a shitty job. They just forgot about you because their life is happening. Think about that. You're busy. Think of all the things you just dealt with in the last week in your family. I mean, I could rattle off 13 things that are going on right now. Okay. Not, not bad, but just shit that's distracting me. Okay. And you add on top of that, that most of the contractors with the exception of Heiner, by the way, um, Every contractor I've hired here in the last year, year and a half, Heiner's the only one that's kept in touch with me. Okay. Um, guys, uh, repeat customers or your past customers, they will refer you 50% um, more or so than just a one-time buyer. Okay. So if I'm one and done, I'm 50%, I'm guess that is less likely to refer you than somebody that you're staying in touch with. Okay. And that's continued to hire me over the years. And guys, I want you to picture it like a spider web. Okay. Like all the little, um, is it silk? I think it's silk, right? Webs are made of silk, something like that. I don't know what the fuck it is, but you know, I'm not a spider expert. I'm not an arachnid guy. I think that's the word. See, I'm using all these big SAT words right now. So anyway, think of it like a web and all the different connection points to that web. If I hire if you hire um, my company and say your name's Bob, Bob hires my company. Bob has a great experience. Bob's mother-in-law, you know, is now widowed and they got to get the house fixed up to be put on the market because they're moving her into assisted living. Bob now connects me with Bob's family and the in-laws or whatever. And we paint that house. Well, then the neighbors see us and then this happens. And guys, it's this never ending fricking web of relationships and conversations if you are top of mind, if you're staying in touch, okay? All right, last thing here. Um, your business um, is gonna be built on customer retention and repeat clients. Yes, we can always add new customers, all right? But wouldn't you like to sell somebody one time and they have a forever relationship with you? Think about that for a minute, all right? Uh, you shouldn't be, and, and I see this a lot. I, I'm, I'm not going to name uh, the company, but there, there's a few, actually a few that I know that their whole business model is they run these ads in these home magazine type things that land in your fucking mailbox at home and they're full of contractors and stuff. And I'm not talking about every contractor, but there's one couple companies in particular I'm thinking of right now that, that I, I know fairly well. Um, they spend every bit of their marketing budget every year to generate $12 million of basically new business a year from those magazines. Okay. They have about zero repeat business. So every year 
they and the reason they have zero repeat business is because they just go in there and bang shit out they sub it out they don't give a shit about the experience and the quality and this and i'm not saying they're bad people or whatever i'm just saying like their business model is you know dump a 55 gallon drum of money on in this one magazine thing every month and fucking get the leads and they don't do any thing to retain their customers so every year they have to get new customers because they do a shitty job honoring some warranties they don't stay in touch people forget about them they sub things out they can't keep subs you know the routine you know that company that i'm talking about everybody's knows companies like that all right guys if um there there's a there's a stat here that if you increase your customer retention by just about five or six percent a company's profitability will increase by an average of 75 percent Okay, so when you imagine the business that you want to build in the future, wouldn't you want to spend your time building a great database full of people that love you, that refer you, that hire you over and over again because they feel respected. They feel like you're, they're important to you. All these different things. All right, so guys, hopefully these five things give you a little perspective on spending a little more time um, connecting, communicating, building relationships, deepening relationships with your past customers. So my challenge here, my call to action, as we call it in the, in the sales marketing podcast video world, is this. Spend some time this week. Carve out an hour and check in with some past customers. Just take 10 people. 10 people. I don't care. 10 people. Uh, and get it out of your head. Right now, some of you are like, well, man, I, I don't know. I, they might be mad at me or whatever. The guy I told you he sold $505,000 in climbing this year um, would reach out to these people. Some of them he didn't hear back from for two or three weeks and the head trash started. He's like, they fucking hate me. They, you know, they're mad at me for something, blah, blah, blah. And then they'd call him back, go, oh man, so glad you called. All right, guys, just take action on this. Start with 10 a week, two a day, five days a week. Pick up the phone, call them, just say thank you. There's no pitch, okay? There's zero pitch. It's not like, hey, I was just thinking about you and you need to pick, you know, work done or whatever it is. No, it's, hey, Joe, it's Tom. We did your deck last year. Hey, man, what's going on? Hey, just going through my, my customer list here, saw your name, was thinking about the project and all that stuff. Just wanted to see how the deck's holding up, man. How's it look? Looks great, man. Thanks. You know, we use it all the time, blah, blah, blah. Well, awesome, man. Well, listen, I just wanted to thank you. You know, thanks for having us out last year and having a conversation here for a couple minutes. I appreciate you, man. Have a great day. Done. Just do that 10 times a week, all right? for the next 30 days, which would be what? About 40 of those. And I promise you, what you put out there is gonna come back to you a thousandfold. All right, take action on this immediately. There is money right under your nose. You guys rock, I gotta roll, I'm out.